Problem 9.2-1. Derive an equation for the maximum deflection in the beam. Here's the beam. It's simply supported with a pin on one end, a roller on the other, and a point load directly in the middle. There are no numbers. This is all symbolic. Let's solve this problem using deflection by integration. Now the first step in uh, using the deflection by integration method is to get the internal moments for the beam. So to find the internal moments, we first must find the reactions. And I've drawn a free body diagram of the beam, and our reactions on the symmetric beam are both p over 2. OK, now finding the internal moment equations for the beam. Uh, because there's a point load here in the middle of our beam, we're going to need two moment equations, because uh, the point load creates a discontinuity. So first of all, I'm going to find the internal moment equations by taking a cut through the left side of the beam, and I'm going to call that at some distance x1. And I'm going to put the external load on, it's the reaction p over 2, and draw the internal resultant forces using the positive sign convention. That means a shear arrow pointing downward, and the moment arrow pointing in the counterclockwise direction. I'll label that as the moment in terms of x1. And then summing the moments about the cut equal to 0, I get uh, this expression here. This expression is for the moment. Uh, it applies for x1 is equal to, uh, goes from 0 to L over 2. So basically, it's, it, this the equation is good for this left half of the beam. OK, now looking at the right half of the beam, I need to develop an equation for the moment in the right half. And to do that, I'm going to define a new axis system in which uh, I'll call it x2 axis. It's going to start here on the right side of the member and go towards the left. Now, I don't have to do that, but I can. So I'm going to do it in this problem. And so to get the equation for the moment, I'm going to cut the beam somewhere here between the uh, right end and the point load. And I'll cut it, cut it at a distance of x2, is what I'll call it. And I'll put on the external load of p over 2 and the internal shear force and moment. Now summing for the moments about the cut equal to 0, I get this equation for the moment, the internal moment in terms of x2. It's equal to p over 2 times uh, x2. And that's good for x2 from 0, which is on the right end, to l over 2. So now I've got two equations for moment, one for the left half of the beam, one for the right half of the beam. The next step is to integrate our moment equations to get our slope equation and elastic curve equation. So to begin, I'm going to use this relationship here, which is the flexural rigidity, which is our modulus of elasticity times our moment of inertia, times the second derivative of our elastic curve equation that's uh, represented by this little v here. That's equal to our moment. So I will set our moment equation equal to this expression here. And I'll do that for both the left and right sides of our beams, with both of their corresponding moment equations. Now I'll integrate them twice. OK, now I've integrated both sides two times. And you can see when we take our moment and integrate it, we get a constant of integration. And if we integrate it again, uh, we get another constant. So now we've ended up with four constants of integration. And we're going to have to deal with these. So we're going to apply our boundary conditions in order to solve for two of our constants of integration. And let's look back up at the problem. Here's the beam. Our boundary conditions are associated with the supports. At the supports, we know the deflection is equal to 0. Now, if we go back to the equations we just derived, this equation is our elastic curve equation. Or in other words, it's our equation for deflection. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that equal to 0 at the supports. So our first boundary condition is that when x1, which we've defined here above, uh, that's x1 is coming from the left side of the beam. When that is equal to 0, which is right at the support, then our deflection is 0. The other boundary condition is when x2 is equal to 0, v2, or the deflection there, is also 0. So if you recall, v2 
uh, is the is this elastic curve here. And when x2 is equal to 0, x2 is originates from the right side of the beam going towards the left. When it's at 0, that's at the support. So our deflection at the support is also 0. So what I've done is I've taken the elastic curve equation and I've applied this boundary condition. So I take EI, our flexural rigidity, I move it to the opposite side of the equation and I set V1 is equal to 0 is equal to this expression and I substitute in for x1 0 and you can see that what we get is c3 is equal to 0. Now doing the same thing for our second boundary condition using this time the elastic curve uh, v2 which is for the right half of the beam we find that our constant of integration c4 is also equal to 0. So we've taken care of two of our constants of integration and what we have left is C1 and C2, two more. To be able to solve for those, we're going to now apply our continuity conditions. So the continuity conditions state that when our slope and deflection equations coming from the left half of the beam meet up with the slope and deflection equations coming from the right half of the beam, when they meet together, right here in the middle, they must be equal. For the deflection, they must be equal in direction and magnitude. In the slope, they must be equal and opposite. Equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. The point where they meet is at a distance of L over 2 from the left end and a distance L over 2 from the right end. So our first continuity condition is that when x1 is equal to L over 2 and x2 is equal to L over 2, that's where the two meet. And in that case, the slope equation for the left half of the beam is equal to negative the slope equation for the right half. And if we look up at the equations that we derived above, the first integral of our moment equation is the slope equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the slope equation here, which we'll call theta 1, equal to the negative of this slope equation, which we'll call theta 2. So I'm applying now our continuity condition. And I've taken the slope equation theta 1 right here and I've substituted in for x1 the value L over 2 and I've set it equal to the negative uh, of this slope equation here substitu substituting in for x2 the value L over 2 and here it is and now solving for c1 we get that c1 is equal to negative PL squared over 8 minus c2 now we'll apply our second continuity condition and that one deals with the deflection equation and that one states that when x1 is equal to L over 2 and x2 is equal to L over 2 that is the point where they meet the deflection equation 1 is equal to the deflection equation 2 the deflection equation here is our elastic curve so we will do the same thing we just did in applying our continuity condition before for the slope we will set this equation here, which is v1, equal to this equation here, which is v2, and we will substitute in for x1 and x2 the value of L over 2. So here I've set the deflection curve equation, which is our elastic curve equation, for v1, uh, evaluated at x1 is equal to L over 2, equal to the elastic curve equation v2, also evaluated at x2 is equal to L over 2 and we can see that these terms are equal on both sides, they cancel out. L2 is the same on both sides and we get that C1 is equal to C2. And now if I call this expression that we found above equation 1 and this expression here equation 2, I can substitute 1 into 2 and I can solve for C2 and I find that's equal to negative PL squared over 16. And now I can plug this term into this expression here and I find that C1 is also equal to negative PL squared over 60. Now that we have found C1 and C2 are remaining constants, we can plug them into our slope and elastic curve equations from above and write our final versions of those two equations and here they are. The equations on the left represent the left half of the beam, the equations on the right represent the right half. And because we have a symmetrically loaded beam, uh, it's no surprise that the two equations are identical when uh, we've drawn the axes the way that we have. 
Now the problem statement originally asked us to find an equation for the maximum deflection in the beam. And we know from calculus that we get a local minimum or maximum at locations where the slope is equal to zero. And since uh, we have the slope equation here, we can take it and set it equal to zero, solve for x1, and find where the maximum occurs. So taking our slope equation, for uh, the left side, setting it equal to zero. Uh, EI just goes away when we multiply both sides by EI. And uh, this reduces to uh, this expression here. Take the square root of both sides. And we find that the slope is zero when x1 is equal to L over 2. No surprise, since we expect the maximum deflection to be right in the middle of the beam. So we can get an expression for the maximum deflection uh, by using the elastic curve and substituting in for x1 the value L over 2. And now subbing in x1 is equal to L over 2 into our elastic curve equation, which is right here, and then doing some simplifying, we get that the maximum deflection in the beam is equal to negative PL cubed over 48 EI. And you could verify this using deflection tables for a simply supported beam with a point load right in the middle, you'll find an equation for the maximum deflection to be this here. And this is how they got it. And we're done.